When I was 19, I moved to Melbourne to start acting classes and pursue my acting dream, which was to book a three-year contract on Naples, then do a few Aussie films before moving to LA by 27 to work in America. But that didn't happen. My experience was so different to my dream. So basically, I did classes from 19 to 23, and within that four years, I didn't get a single audition. So I signed with the agent that was with the school that I was doing classes at. And I could see like other classmates and other friends doing auditions. And for some reason, I just didn't get one. But I finally got one when I was 23 for a TV show called Blue Healers. It was a long running, really popular show in Australia at the time. And I didn't get that audition through my agent. I had started paying to see casting directors because I have casting director workshops. And I think, you know, it was like $50 a, a pop or whatever. But you get to do a scene in front of the casting director for Blue Healers and Neighbours. So I did one for Blue Healers. And thankfully, the casting director liked me because then from that she got me in to audition for Millie which is the character that I played. Look I'm sure you've got nothing to worry about he's probably just sleeping it off at a mate's place. I've already been round to that dropkick Carter's place Warwick crashed in his couch last night and when he got up Warwick was gone. Well maybe had some things to organise and just forgot I've about I've driven breakfast. around to all the places I can think of. I've called his mobile but it just rings out. The ceremony is supposed to start in four hours. You have to find him. A month after Blue Healers, I got another audition for Neighbours, which I was totally excited about. It wasn't for a long-term role, unfortunately. It was just for like one episode. It was for Boyd's Crush at uni. And I really wanted it. And unfortunately, I didn't get it. And not only didn't I get that role, I also didn't get another audition until I was 30. So I had to wait seven years until I got another audition after that. Yep, <laughs> but part of that is because I studied early childhood education for two years and traveled overseas for three years. So that's five years gone. And during that time, I didn't do acting classes or have an agent, but I still really wanted an acting career. So after I got back from traveling, I got another agent, but again, I wasn't getting auditions. So I decided to create work for myself, which brings me to filmmaking. At 28, I made my first short film and fell in love with it straight away. I can't even describe the feeling I had after I made my first short film. So I wrote, directed, and was in my first short film. I put it on the film festival circuit. It didn't go well, but I was just addicted to filmmaking. And I haven't stopped making films since I was 28 and I bloody love it. And it definitely overtook my love for acting for a decade. I still had one foot in acting, but I was so in love with filmmaking and I was making more waves. I was sort of getting a little bit more success with filmmaking than I ever had with acting. At the time, I really found filmmaking more fulfilling than acting as well. So the minute I made my first short film, it's like my focus went from acting to filmmaking really quickly and I had tunnel vision for filmmaking for a decade. But I did still have one foot in acting and I still had a crush in acting. And the next role I booked was on the ABC comedy, 8 M Aboriginal Radio, where I played a teacher for one episode. My agent at the time didn't get me that audition either it was an open call and I got the audition that way during this time I did get another neighbors audition through my agent in 2018 and this time I got it 10 years after not getting the role of Boyd's crush I got cast as Catherine and I only had two lines but it was the best experience because I've wanted to be on neighbors for so long and I finally got it and it's such a well-oiled machine over there it's still running today like in 2024 neighbors are still going like that's how iconic the show is and so I'm just really pumped that I actually got to be on it and um, in terms of like where I'm at now with acting, like I went from like getting one audition every now and then to about three or four auditions a year because after Neighbours I ended up changing agents um, and I'm still with her now and I'm so happy that I changed with her because she ended up getting me into rooms like rooms that I could I could just never get into like with really big casting directors here like Nikki Barrett and Kirsty McGregor. Um, my agent has gotten me into those rooms which you know I'm so grateful for. Like for instance Nikki Barrett cast Furiosa and I got an audition <laughs> for Sad Eyes and unfortunately I didn't get it but I have done a whole video on that audition and I actually, I actually show you my audition for Furiosa if you want to see that I'll link it in the description below. Um, but even just getting a chance to audition for big parts like that is amazing. So right now in my career I'm at that stage where I'm still going for big parts or still going for small supporting but I'm going for small parts in big projects like Furiosa. And I did have another audition really recently for a really big film um, that I'm not allowed to talk about because obviously it's not 
released yet and there's confidentiality laws and all that sort of rules and all that sort of stuff. Um, so, and something exciting happened as well last year. I got, I did an audition for We Bury the Dead, which is the Daisy Ridley movie and I got it and we filmed it in February this year and I think it's gonna be released in 2025, but that was an amazing experience. It was so awesome. I can't talk about it obviously because it hasn't been released yet, but after it's released, I'll you know do a video on it. And uh, yeah, it was, it was amazing and it's really made me hungry for more roles and more auditions. So I've had four auditions thus far this year, it's June and I'm really hoping that I get a couple more by December and I'm hoping that I book something by December because that, that would be amazing. So that's my goal for this year, that I book something else by December and if I don't, I don't because it's so unpredictable, but you know, we'll see. But also if you're going for an acting career as well, like I, you know, I know how hard it is. So like I empathize with you and sympathize with you. Like it is really difficult and everyone has like their own journey. You might be getting heaps of auditions and not booking and that's, that's hard and heartbreak, you know, as well. Um, but my advice is just to keep going, but also don't give yourself an age limit. Like if you're like 28 and you're like, if I haven't made it by the time I'm 30, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to give up. Why? Number one, 30 is insanely young. It is so young. And I think that society tricks us and says that it's old, but it's not it's super young. And number two, you're not going to suddenly just stop wanting it because you've turned 30. Like you're still going to want it. And then if you don't pursue it, then you're going to feel like shit because you're not pursuing your passion. So my advice is just to never give up and just to keep going and you will eventually break through. Like I'm finally feeling uh, I'm finally feeling like I'm sort of like I've cracked a window and I'm finally sort of starting to be in the mix and get auditions and I've had to wait like a really long fucking time and I'm super proud of myself so if you're you know in this game as well and it's hard and be proud of yourself as well because it is really difficult and if you have sad days that's okay but just never give up because you just never know when it's going to happen you never know we're going to crack a window or crack a door so um good luck with your with your acting career and yeah, for me, like I just hope I book something this year and I guess we'll just have to see. Anyway, thanks guys. I'll see you on my next video. Bye.